Hey, Dream Drivers, welcome to episode 170. And today we're going to be talking about my favorite marketing strategies that you can use to grow your brand. Hey, this is Raina Campbell, your chief dream driver, and welcome to the No Parking Podcast, where through conversations and discussions with creators like yourself, We'll find interesting approaches to help you take your dreams out of park, put them in drive, and ride towards success. I know a lot of you guys have wondered, like, Raina, what has been your your key? How did you grow Dreams and Drive? How did you get over 600,000 downloads? How did you do it all? And hopefully on this episode, you'll take away all my favorite learnings, all my favorite teachings, because I am ready to share and I am ready to um, just teach you all simple marketing things that you can implement today that you can see significant results in your own brand, your own businesses. Even if you do not have a podcast, I'm telling you these keys to success, these marketing tips will still be applicable. So a few housekeeping notes, if you're wondering why this episode came out later than normal, normally I release on Mondays, but this episode has come out on a Tuesday, it's just because sometimes life happens, and I've realized that it's okay to put things in neutral, it's okay to sometimes put things into park. I had all intentions on releasing an episode on Monday morning, but then my grandma got sick over the weekend, and a lot of us as entrepreneurs, as people who are building brands and we're solopreneurs, we're doing this by ourselves ourselves, we do not always have a team that we can just outsource things to. And I had to choose, right? Was I going to go see my grandmother and spend time, genuine time, intentional time with my grandmother in the hospital? Or was I going to try to put together an episode? And to me, you know, my grandmother, I love her to death. You guys, if you ever saw her on my personal Instagram or even on the Dreams and Drive Instagram page, she means so much to me. She's a part of my why. She's a part of my legacy. And I didn't want to have to make a choice between dreams and drive or my grandma. At that moment, my grandmother needed me. She needed my family. She needed my sister. She needed my mom. And I went to her and I could have been, I could have like torn my eyes out late at night to try to get the episode up. But to me, it was like, nah, it's not always necessary. Sometimes I think we put so much pressure on ourselves to deliver all the time that we don't realize that sometimes it's okay to take a break guys it's okay so the episode is still coming out you'll still get this knowledge hopefully people who were looking for it on Monday aren't too mad at me but life happens sometimes and when life happens you have to just let it happen okay So for people who are new, hopefully you are following us on social media. We are Dreams and Drive across the board. I love it when you guys are sharing. So if you enjoy some of the marketing tips that you'll learn later, please screenshot this, share it with a friend, tweet about us, share it on LinkedIn, share it on Facebook, wherever you want. And if you have not already, make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening, whether that be um, on Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Cast, CastBox, wherever. Hit the subscribe button so that you get notifications every time we have a new episode. So this episode is all about Raina's marketing tips to success and how I built dreams and drive. So the first thing I want to define is what is marketing, right? Marketing, as defined by Google, is the action or business of promoting and selling products or services, including market research and advertising. So basically, marketing is getting people to know about your product or your service, and hopefully that leads to some type of action, which for most people, marketing leads to sales, right? So then thinking about Dreams and Drive, when I first started it, I had this vision of Dreams and Drive being a community of inspiring people to take action on their dreams. So my biggest goal, and that's the biggest thing before you start to marketing, you have to really understand this. And I'm going to pause right here and say this episode is going to go into detail, guys. So I suggest that if you have a notepad, if you're listening to this while you're driving, you know, maybe you might want to pause it and wait till you're in a place by yourself so you can take notes. There's going to be a lot that I'm sharing and I'm going to try to be as detailed but not too detailed that it goes over your head, all right? So there's a lot of stuff that I'm sharing. But the first thing that I want you guys to remember is if you're marketing, no matter what it is, the most important thing that you need to understand is what is your measure of marketing, right? What is the metric that are you using to know if your marketing is successful or not? 
And for me, when I started out, my marketing goal was growth, right? It wasn't sales. It wasn't getting clients. It was growth. That meant increasing downloads. That meant getting more eyeballs on Dreams and Drive, more people listening to Dreams and Drive. That was my one big marketing goal. And it still is a huge marketing goal, all right? So we know that we need to have a marketing goal. We understand the definition of marketing. And before we even get into my tips today, I want to stop and say... There are two books that were extremely, extremely helpful to me in my own marketing journey. So I graduated from Princeton in 2013. I did not have a marketing degree. I had a degree in sociology and I had to enter the working world and really figure out what kind of things can I do given my skill set? And marketing was one of them. I was an intern at the Office of Career Services while I was in college. So I kind of had an idea for what, you know, marketing was. But there was one book in particular that I have to thank Mary Cole from CBS. She gave me a Barnes and Noble gift card. I remember going to the Barnes and Nobles in downtown Brooklyn and buying this book. I want to say, um, in June or July after I graduated, maybe the year before I graduated. I don't remember the specifics, but the book is called Guerrilla Marketing Remix, right? And it's The Principles of Guerrilla Marketing, and that's by Jay Conrad Levinson and his wife, Jeannie Levinson, Guerrilla Marketing Remix. That book, it's like about 400 pages long, but it is so detailed, and it really expands your mind to the idea of grassroots and guerrilla marketing. I highly suggest you guys get that book. If you know nothing about marketing, if you know a lot about marketing, it's just that good. And you can get this book at dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore. I'm creating an online bookstore that just has all, you know, the books that I'm going to be referencing in episodes. And I'm going to go back and backfill it with other books that have been referenced in other episodes. And the second book that I want to talk about that you'll hear more about later in this episode is Launched by Jeff Walker. And it's all about how to launch a brand or how to launch uh, whatever it is that you want to launch. It takes you through the different processes of launching. All right. So if you want to get those books right now, as you're listening, add them to your Amazon cart. Go to dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore, dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore. And that's where we're going to have all the books that we mentioned in every episode from now on. Okay. All right, so get a pen. We're going to get into this, and we have a lot of tips here today. We have over 15 tips I'm going to be sharing. I'm also just going to preface this and say that a lot of these tips are not going to be in-depth, 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 and I want to hear back from you guys about the ones that you want me to go more in-depth in because, as you know, for the past four years, I've worked as a marketing specialist at an e-commerce fulfillment company, and this is what this was my full-time job, right? It was all about learning marketing, building sales funnels, uh, email automation, all all that good stuff. So I'm just going to preface this with saying that this is what I did full time. So um, it's not going to be something that you can just pick up in a day. But if you at least know certain things, it's definitely stuff that you can do on your own or with a small team. All right. So the first goal here that we're going to be talking about today is number one, what did I do to build dreams and drive? You had to build a strong personal brand, right? My biggest thing in just growing, going into dreams and drive is people, because I was the host, people wanted to know who is this host. I already came into dreams and drive with some type of brand. I had been writing for Madame Noir for a while. I had lots of bylines. RainaCampbell.com was a thriving personal blog of mine. So I already came in there with a strong personal personal brand and people knew that I was creating something, but it was this idea of making sure that I was building a foundation by which the brand could sit on. And that was my personal brand, right? So number one was building a strong personal brand and then defining that goal, which was growth. What is your marketing goal? For some people, it might be sales. For other people, it might be new users. I think one of our past episode guests, Melody McCoskey of Style Seat, talked about like you have to have those metrics that you're going to be looking at day over day. And for me, it was increasing downloads month over month. I knew I was successful in my marketing goals if we were getting new new listeners to the show every week and if we're then also getting new email subscribers and all that stuff right so you really want to make sure you have your goal defined 
Number two is understand who your audience is and live in your niche. So this is one of the things that I used to tell my personal branding or branding consultation, marketing consultation clients a lot of times is understand who's your audience. Who is it that's listening to your show? So I remember one time I interviewed someone. I said, you know, who are you trying to target? And they were like, hey, I'm just trying to target moms. And I said, that's horrible because you cannot build a brand and make it general. I think Pat Flynn says this all the time, but riches are in the niches, right? Um, Or niches. I say niches. I don't know if it's niche or niche, whatever. But um, you really have to understand who your audience is. Take the time to carve out and define who your audience is. And for me, it's called in the marketing world, a marketing avatar, right? I know Stephen Hart of Trailblazers podcast, he talks about this a lot, but take some time to define who your marketing avatar is. Who are they? Where do they live? What age are they? What's their financial background? What do, what do they listen to? What are their challenges? How many kids do they have? What are their salary? Really like make it a specific person. Some people can name them, right? You know, you can name them Sally, you can name them Bob, you can have multiple avatars, but you need to be speaking to a specific avatar when you're building any type of brand and then the key is is to live into your niche you need to know everything you need to know where that person's currently getting the information that you're trying to to give them so where are they currently getting the value that you're you're bringing and for dreams and drive right I had to look at other podcasts that were inspirational that might have been led by black women that might be about building your dreams but also giving concrete information and I had to really study you know how are these people interacting with their audience what is the audience feedback like do a lot of research in the beginning and it's also great when you are your audience I know a lot of people who have built um I'm thinking about one of our earlier guests I want to say episode I forgot but it was really early Lana Boone Uh, She's the CEO and founder of Curly Clips. She was her target customer. So she deeply understood what the needs were of her audience. That's the big thing that a lot of people don't think about when they're building a brand. You need to know what your audience needs, right? And I think there's a difference between what they want and what they need. I think sometimes things that they want are things that they'll put off. But if they need it, they will consume it right now. So really take some time to think about what is it that your audience needs right now that you can deliver and that you can provide value and that you can give them the answers to with whatever your product or service is. You need to know how they walk. You need to know how they talk. You need to know how everything, how they eat. You have to really make your audience member your best friend in your head. Just how you study people. I know a lot of people say that, you know, certain online influencers may be their best friend in their head. Well, you need to find some online ideal customers, online ideal avatars that you can make your best friend in your head. And then that will help you as you're working towards your marketing goals. So number three is with your brand, you have to create a unique position and viewpoint. What's different about you, right? And for dreams and drive in the beginning is, I think what was really made it different was this whole idea of taking your dreams out of parking into drive and what the story behind that was, right? Here I was, a Princeton graduate who had kind of fiddled, who you thought would have probably been more successful than she really was. And I'm putting successful in air quotes, but I really had to define out what the unique position what were people going to get from dreams and drive that they couldn't get from anywhere else and a big thing for that was me me as the host my perspective the way I interviewed people the style of the interviews the format of the interviews the questions all those things were the unique viewpoint and the unique position because when you're taking the time to really create the brand the experience the story that is what you're going to now be telling people as you're building the brand as you're talking about the brand. And for me, the biggest thing that I think helped me early on was creating my one or like my, my 30 second elevator pitch, right? Like whenever I talk to people, I say, Hey, my name is Raina Campbell. I'm the chief dream driver at dreams and drive, which is a weekly podcast for creative and lifestyle entrepreneurs. That's my target avatar, right? And 
I could at least go more detail there, but we'll just keep it like that. You know, I am the host of a weekly podcast for creative and lifestyle entrepreneurs who what? Who want to take their dreams from park to drive and do what? Build a successful life and business. Now, if you're listening to this right now, hopefully you fit within that avatar, right? Hopefully you're somebody who has a dream that you've either taken out of park or want to take out of park because you want what a successful life and or business or probably both, right? So take some time to really nail down your unique elevator pitch because I'm telling you, if you can really figure out who you're working, who you're creating value for, what you want them to do and why it's important to them, then you're going to be extremely, extremely useful. All right, so let's go to number four. You got to study the industry inside and out. I know a lot of you guys are like, these are not marketing tips. These are marketing tips. These are very specific marketing tips because they're things that people are not doing. You cannot want to create a hair brand and know nothing about the hair industry or know nothing about the, the history of the hair industry. So for me, building Dreams and Drive, I had to take time to understand the industry, the podcast industry. I did went into Dreams and Drive knowing nothing about podcasting. I'm telling you. August 2015, I said I wanted to have a podcast. All I knew was, was how to very, you know, amateurly, I don't even know if that's a word, but I did not really know. I only knew how to edit audio. So I took the time to learn who the major players were, you know, what podcast hosting was. And you can do that for your industry. And in that research, and I'm a great researcher, and I credit that to my high school and to Princeton for making me a very good researcher, you will learn things. I'm a big, big, big proponent of finding the blueprints. Find how other people were were building podcasts. Read books about it. Read articles about it it see what worked see what didn't work and in that that will help you create your own blueprint but the biggest thing I think that comes with studying the industry inside and out is you're able to see who the major players are right so with me studying the industry that's when I first stumbled across Barry of Podcasts and Color and this podcast directory that she was creating you know this is how I found out about a lot of other podcasts such as Lewis Howe's School of Greatness and he was a major major inspiration to me in the beginning um, John Lee Dumas all these other people, you, you'll start to see where the holes are and that will really start to inform all your other marketing tactics, all right? So number four was study the industry inside and out. Now number five, once you define what your brand is, right? You really need to figure out what is the community that you're going to create. I don't care what brand it is nowadays in 2018 in the 20th first century, you need to create community. People are looking for community. People are looking for something to belong to. And if you can be the curator of a community for your audience, that's going to be the biggest thing that can help your marketing efforts. So for me, it was about create a community and then name them. So I came up with Dream Drivers and I really had to figure out, all right, so what's going to be the home base and the home base? to me, should be a website, dreamsanddrive.com. What is that going to look like? You know, what are the going to be the components? I know I wanted it to be very simple. It had to be a place where people could, A, learn about Dream Drivers, sign up for Dream Driver related things, or listen to the podcast. So I designed the website. I made it very, 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 very simple. And the biggest thing why I say everybody in 2018 should have a Home is because that's the thing that you own. If I had no place to house my website, I, if I, Apple Podcasts or Spotify was to be broken down tomorrow, I would still have my website. And that's the big thing that I think a lot of people are now relying on social media to be your home. No, you need to create your own home base, right? Just like we all need somewhere to live at night, your brand needs somewhere to live as well. And in this whole creating the community and naming them. It gives people something to belong to. And that's where your whole name and branding is going to be very important, right? Dreams and Drive was very catchy. Now, in the beginning, No Parking was the original name of the podcast. And after a few months, I realized that it wasn't as catchy as the tagline, which was the Dreams and Drive community. So I switched the name to Dreams and Drive, and I'm so happy that I did. So we're talking about a lot of pre-launch things. And this was the biggest thing for me is creating hype before you launch. And that's where that book by Jeff Walker, Launch, comes in. So 
you can get that book at dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore. Um, and that book just outlines the idea of setting up a launch from pre-launch to post-launch, right? And a lot of people, when they're building a brand and they want to build a brand, they're not really being very specific about the things that they're doing in order to get the buzz started. Because if you're not already famous, if you're not Beyonce and you're trying to build something, you got to make sure that people know about it. And for me, what I did, uh, because I already had a small email list from my personal blog and I had a, a, a personal brand, that foundation, as I told you guys in the first step, is I had a little pre-launch sign up. So I said, hey, you know, answer this question. What's your biggest challenge on your dream driving journey? I, de- I, I defined what it was and I had people submit, right? So I had about 50 people who signed up and told me what their challenges were. And that gave me content. So that gave me an idea of what people were challenging challenge with and how I could provide value to them, right? Because these people were ideally my target audience. I also had them define what kind of industry they were in. And I was able to use that information to help create hype. You know, I would say, oh, I'm going to have this guest. I'm going to talk about this thing because that's what they told me they wanted to hear about. And I think another big thing with creating hype before you launch is I announced it to the world. If you're trying to create something, unless it's super top secret, you need to figure out a way to tell people about it. And that was a way for me to also be accountable was I was telling my Facebook audience, my LinkedIn audience that on January 1st, 2016, I was launching a podcast that was going to do X, X, and X. And people want to see you succeed. If you already had a brand, if you already had something, they see you out here hustling, they're going to be hyped with you, right? So you create this hype, you create a date. It's kind of like having an online launch party, right? A lot of people invest money in like these extravagant launch parties. I'm telling you, invest in a free one or online. And that's what I did with getting this hype up around the event. So number seven is pick a social media channel and use it strategically. If you're trying to create any business now, social media is probably going to be very important. But you don't have to use every single social media. You probably should have the names in all of them and have a minor presence. But figure out which strains of social media is going to be be the ones that are going to work for your brand. And when I first started, to be honest, I really didn't focus on social media as much. I focused on my email list, probably my Facebook, but I wasn't seeing social media as a tool. There are so many different channels that you can think about. Instagram, Instagram stories now, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram um, live, Facebook groups. Periscope was big when I first started. Um, But you need to think about which of these channels is specific for your audience, meaning where is your audience currently living and how can you get them content in the way that they're consuming it? And so for me, because of a podcast, I realized the two channels that were probably going to be the most important for me We're going to be Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Well, three channels, right? So for me, Twitter became the place that I was going to be meeting and starting conversations. I love what Barry of Podcasts and Color was doing with her hashtags. She's a hashtag police, but she is on it, right? So I would get in the hashtags. I would follow people. I would get, you know, conversations started with other podcasters. On Instagram, I created this social media strategy. So I knew for every episode, I was going to have a graphic. I was going to do pull quotes and I was going to direct people to listen to the episode from the link in the bio. So I created this whole social media strategy. You'll see that there are very specific types of posts. There's always going to be an episode graphic. There's always going to be some kind of quotes because that's what I noticed is what people were going to, you know, respond to and would help me with my ultimate goal, which was growth, which was measured in what downloads, month over month downloads. Now, depending upon the business you have, Maybe Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook will not be what's going to work for you. Maybe it's some other social media. Maybe it's in person. Maybe it's something else. But whatever it is, I would really say focus on two channels max. I think if you're a small team, you can't do a lot by yourself. And you also want to make sure you're doing it well. I know there's a lot of people out here who are killing on Instagram, who may be killing it on other social media channels. But find out where your audience really likes to engage with you and where you can create content that's going to speak to them. Like for me, I found that Instagram was a very great place for audiograms. 
I love making audio grants, which are basically, you know, video over photos or, or pictures or whatever. And that's a great way for people to get excited about the episodes. And then I would lead them back to what the website link in bio to listen lead them back to my home, right? They'll be on social media that might, hey, come back to my house, come back to my website and listen to the show there. And one of the biggest things that I learned with any type of social media strategy, when you're social, you need to make sure that you are also shareable. Everything you have, like when I make an audiogram, I make sure that it has a brand identifier. I also make sure that it has, um, you know, a link. Where can people go in and, um, and listen to this, right? Because if they screenshot it, which I believe everything is screenshot in 2018, right? I make things so that they can be screenshotted and shared. Always have that in mind. Is this screenshotable? If someone stumbles across this three years in the three years from now in the camera roll, will they know how to find me and will my brand be easy to identify? So think about that as you guys are creating your social media graphics and your social media strategies right down to your caption. You have to make sure that you're supplying the information that will lead you to your marketing goals. All right, so let's get to our tip number eight. You want to make sure your visual brand is popping or at least recognizable and consistent. So I'm talking about your logo. Do you have a logo? Do you have something that people can identify? So I, in the early days, made Dreams and Drive logo or in Canva using the permanent marker font, right? It was very, very simple, but it was something that I used consistently across everything. And I've, you know, I've tweaked it a little bit, but it's pretty much the same logo that I created in the beginning, right? Do you have branded photos? Do you have things that people can identify? Because you, we're dumb. At the end of the day, we like to see things consistent across all platforms. Like if you see the Nike check, wherever it is, you know, it's Nike. And I really think that that's very important to branding, even if it's bad, like even if it's not the best logo, at least it's something that you're using everywhere and people will recognize you from it. And one of the things that you'll learn in that Guerrilla Marketing Remix book that you can get at dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore is that everything is a brandable moment, right? Receipts, um, your email signature, your business cards. Like there's so many places that you can imprint your brand and that will help you drive people to your home so that you can meet your goal. New listeners, or for me, it's new listeners. It's retaining the old listeners, right? You really, really need to be very specific about what you're visually conveying to the world, what people are feeling when they're experiencing you, what they're seeing when they're experiencing you, um, because it's going to help you with whatever the goal is that you're reaching towards. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I never said that it has to be perfect, but I do think you need to create something so that people can identify with you. Now, number nine, which is networking with influencers in your niche. This was a very critical thing for me building dreams and drive. And there are lots of different ways that I went about networking with influencers. And I want you to consider each of these. Okay. So for me, social media, right? Like it's so easy to follow somebody to start, you know, a social media relationship with people. There's so many people that I've met through social media, whether it's through Instagram or Twitter, Twitter chats, Twitter hashtags, go in there, see what people are doing. See, see how you can develop these online relationships because people, if you're good to them, they'll be good to you, right? It can become reciprocal. Another way to network with influencers in your network is to go to conferences, figure out what events are, you know, are very important to your avatar to your ideal persona um go to meetup.com if you're building a business around uh creating bookmarks maybe there's a bookmark making a business maybe there's a bookmark making meetup maybe there is a arts and craft meetup really do a venn diagram or do a little uh word word identification Think about what are all the different areas of influence that are related to your area of influence. So for me, dream driving, it could be millennial entrepreneurship. It could be inspiration. It could be creatives. And then creatives could be photographers, painters, uh, anything, dancers, right? There's so many different niches and you can get really creative about 
how you're going about networking, right? For me, a big, big thing in my own a journey was networking with other podcasters. So from the beginning, I was very, very um, intentional about creating very solid relationships with podcasters that I felt were going to be very instrumental in me learning from and also people that I could help in, in ways as well. And I did that a lot through Twitter. I did that a lot through social media. Barry of Podcast and Color was somebody in the beginning that was so, you know, instrumental to me that my guests that were on the show, that I'm gonna give you guys a little a little key here. Doing a question and answer interview style podcast was also strategic. I could have started out not having any guests on the show and just me talking. But I read this book, I read this article a long time ago. I don't even know if the word is real. Maybe I'm making the name up, but I remember the the word called brandscaping, which is basically writing the back of another brand. And when you have guests on your show, right, and they share it with their audience, you're now able to reach an audience that you never had before. And that was the biggest thing. Like, you know, when I had the budget Nista on early on in the show and she shared it with her audience. Now I had people who never knew about Dreams and Drive or Raina Campbell, but now knew about it. So for me, the biggest influencers in my niche were the people who I were bringing on the show as expert guests. And I was able to then ride their wave and um, really, really that really helped catapult my my brand as well as giving me credibility. Um, industry events, uh, even coaching. You can invest in coaching, invest in mentorship with people that you think are very tied to whatever your industry is. Uh, being masterminds, I was gifted a wonderful match mastermind with Sophia. Satterwhite, uh, I want to say early on in my podcast journey. And now I have a wonderful podcast mastermind that we meet once a month to talk about our podcast with a lot of uh, guests who've even been on this show. And getting to network with other influencers is so important because there's so many things that you're able to learn from them. And there's so many things that you don't, mistakes that you don't have to make. All right, so number 10, an important thing is to partner with distribution networks. So if you think about a podcast for me, right, and think you can apply this to any business that you have as well. The biggest thing to growth is increasing your channels of distribution. So one of the main channels of distribution for a podcast is, you know, whoever is distributing distributing your rss feed and apple podcast is a huge quote-unquote player of podcasts right it's a huge online directory for me a critical point in my journey was episode of 32 with jeff and kalisa of the runaway experience where i had an apple podcast feature So this is the biggest platform for a podcast. And to have a feature that went out to all of their U.S. users, that meant I was getting like so many eyeballs on my show. And I remember maybe around that time I was averaging maybe about 200 downloads per episode. By episode 32, I think that episode got around like 5,000 downloads within a week period. So going from 200 to 5,000, do the math there, all because of a distribution platform spotlight so you can be creating whatever industry you are who is the major player in your industry and how can you pitch some sort of mutually beneficial collaboration now if you're in the podcasting realm you can also do this with like you know other podcast players or other podcast directories it doesn't always have to be the huge one like apple Podcasts. it could be smaller ones you know smaller players it could be podcast networks podcast companies if you're in you know i'm going to take it back to the book marketing the bookmarking space maybe it's bookstores maybe it's publishers get creative but you have to really be out there with your story your unique perspective and pitching people now I'm gonna have a podcast later on about networking and how to do all this stuff but if you're out here trying to grow and market your brand you cannot you cannot be nervous. You cannot be scared to actually talk to people because that's what marketing is. And if your goal, if your goal is growth, you're gonna have to go and talk to people. Okay. Other distribution platforms that are good, you know, is YouTube. YouTube is video content, but for podcasts, I was able to convert it to audio and put a picture on it and it still played. I did that through my podcast hosting partner, Libsyn, which if you guys want to get two months free of Libsyn, you can 
Uh, use the code DID when signing up. I love Libsyn. It allows me to push it to all the platforms like Google Play, SoundCloud, um, iHeartRadio. You definitely want to increase as many platforms as possible that are playing it so that you always can get new users. And another platform that I see that is also very useful is like news, right? Press. Jamila Soufrant of Journey to Launch podcast. She has a like, I want to say weekly, a segment or News 12 New York where she talks about personal finance tips. Figure out how you can make partnerships or relationships with people who need your content, with people who are trying to serve the same people that you're trying to serve. I think sometimes as we're building brands, we see things as competition, but no, collaboration over competition, guys. Collaboration always wins at the end of the day. So number 10 is think about paid social advertising. So if you're trying to build a brand, you you should be thinking about how you can create some type of advertising budget. Every type of advertising can't be free. So I will be honest and say I haven't done a lot of paid advertising, but social media advertising, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, that might be a great way for you to spend some you know, small amounts of money, figure out what works. Play around with it. Another thing that you can invest in, let's say you are a hair brand, you're trying to build a hair company, maybe investing in some YouTube reviews by influencers in your niche would be important. Paying for that because that's going to drive traffic to your home and help you reach your marketing goal, right? So paid social media advertising is something else that you can think about. Now, let's say you're a local business. Maybe that's newspaper advertising. Maybe that is paying for a billboard. Maybe that is paying for some type of advertising spot in your local movie theater. Whatever it is, you need to think about Maybe everything can't be free. I need to set aside some budget to do some targeted media buying, as they would call it, right? Because that stuff can drive traffic. If you're the right place with the right enough people and eyes on whatever it is your call to action is, you can see results. So don't shy away from spending money, but spend it smartly, people, okay? Number 12 is creating content opt-ins that drive SEO traffic. So... No matter what kind of business you have now, doing something on the web is still important. So I've always had this idea. I'm going to give you this example in the terms of a laundromat, right? So if I was to open up a laundromat, let's say in the corner of my block, whatever, right? What's the biggest thing for a laundromat to stay open? You need to have sales. So how could I create content that could help me with this goal of driving sales? So if I'm a laundromat in an urban city, maybe I create um, a, a ebook that says how to, you know, make that white shirt last two days or something like that. Something that your ideal avatar, as we discussed earlier, is is in need of. And if you become the person who provides that need, they have to, you know, put in their little email address in order to get the ebook and then they'll learn all about it and you can send them follow up messages. This is where the whole email automation stuff comes in. Them, you know, having an email list and you marketing to them that way. But then that can be a great way for you to drive traffic. So one of the things that I've helped some of my clients before, I remember I had a hair, a hair client, um, she made an ebook about how she grew waist length hair. So if you're buying hair extensions, you either want your hair to be longer or you uh, are trying to protect your own hair. So this ebook that she wrote about how she grew her hair to waist length was something that she promoted online. So people who were, you know, trying to find protective styles or who were trying to, you know, get hair growth tips found her ebook. They signed up for it. So they were now added to her mailing list and they were then sent on a mailing funnel, right? Where she was able to tell them when she launched her site, when she had sales and follow up with more tips. So now that she was a trusted person and eventually that helped translate into sales because her big marketing goal was growth. But at the same time, she measured that in sales and in dollars. 
So what are things or what is content that you can create? It doesn't always have to be an opt-in. It could just be a blog that leads to your website. So if you're a shoemaker, maybe it's how to find the right stiletto that won't hurt your foot, right? And then people are searching for this, they'll land in your site, and then you can market to them and do your whole stuff there. So no matter what type of business you are, I think that you really have to always, this is going to come back to providing value for your customer. What is the value that you're 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 creating whatever type of brand whatever type of podcast whatever it is create content that can drive people to your home base that they can then take some type of action on and then you can add them to whatever your marketing strategy is or whatever your marketing goal is and on that same note Number 13 is all about your audience. Don't forget about your audience. So a big part of Dreams and Drive and me growing it was really understanding my audience and engaging with them. So if you ever DM me on Instagram, you'll probably get a reply to me, a reply from me, even if it's not a long reply. I was a big fan of surveying my audience back in the day, right? I love understanding what they loved about the show, what they didn't love about the show, what they wanted more of, because... At the end of the day, your business isn't what you think it is. Your business is what your customers say it is. And you have to understand at all times what your audience is saying about you. Now, you can do that through social media. You can do that through third-party applications. I use a Google, good old Google Docs survey and had people go to dreamsanddrive.com slash survey to fill it out. I incentivize them sometimes. Um, I ask for testimonials, but It's just so important to really engage with your audience because number one, and this is something that's not debated, word of mouth marketing is always going to be the best marketing ever. If I say, mom, what kind of orange juice should I buy? And she tells me, get this type of brand. I'm going to trust what my mother says because I trust her and I know she won't lead me astray. So if you can get your audience to put you first when somebody asks them about something that's going to lead to your company or could lead to your company, that's the goal. Make sure that you are putting your audience first and that you are becoming top of mind for your audience. And I think a lot of times when we're building stuff, we say, oh, I don't have time to engage with my audience. I don't have time to respond. Listen, that's probably the most important thing you can do. I don't care how big or how small. That's how you measure true influence. How hard will your audience ride for you when you're not there? Ask yourself that. And if you don't think they will, then you need to invest in that relationship. Just like anything else in life, the relationship with your audience is key. It is ideal. It is so important. And that goes to number 14. Like I think a big thing with me in getting more people to listen to the show was hosting giveaways. Now, you know, I would host giveaways of services. I would host giveaways with other brands. I would host giveaways with my guests. But the thing is, that was a great way for me to engage with my audience. And that was also a great way for people to share the podcast. So some giveaways people had to, you know, share in order to enter. Or some giveaways people had to take some kind of action but, you know, even if it was just them putting their email address, then I could then market to them and the, the message that I marketed to them could have some kind of action that was shareable. For me, giveaways was really good for growing my email list, um, getting more downloads and just getting the brand out there. Because people like when you are hosting giveaways that are relevant to their needs as well. So number 15 goes back to the idea of audience, right? And just getting testimonials, getting feedback. It's so, so important um, when you're out there trying to get or grow anything is to understand what people are saying and to encourage people to go to Apple Podcasts, leave a review, and then reward them for doing that. So you know if I have a new review, I'll always you know read it on the show and shout out the person out. So that was also a very strategical thing, right? But here's one that I think a lot of us don't often think about, and I'm telling you it's so important for growth. And this is where the future of marketing is. It's data analytics. Understand your data. Now, for me as a podcaster, there's very specific data that's important. There's podcast related data. So that's, you know, listens, that's user locations, that's um, 
you know, how long people are, are listening to episodes, cutoff times, all that stuff. And I get that through my podcast hosting, Libsyn, or even through uh, Apple Podcasts. They have their own analytics that's um, kind of in the beta mode. Then your website analytics, right? I can go to google.com slash analytics and pull up my website and understand how how much time a person is spending on a certain web page. What's my audience demographic? What age or people? What are their interests? All this stuff that is collected through cookies or my website, I'm able to analyze and that can help me make decisions on my podcast. So I know that most of the people listening to my podcast are between the ages of 25 to 34. So does that mean I'm going to have episodes of Paw Patrol on Dreams and Drag? Probably not. There's so much stuff that you can learn about your audience that can help you make more informed decisions or in content or in ways you interact with your audience if only you looked. And I think a lot of times we get so scared of data, but whatever your platform is, whatever your brand is, there's probably some kind of back end data that you're not looking at. Um, You can even look at through your uh, payment provider. So I want to say through PayPal, Square, whatever you use, of whatever your payment processor is, it can tell you, you know, how many abandoned carts did you have? You know, Shopify, if you're looking at e-commerce, how many people put things in their cart but didn't buy? Maybe you need to look at that and, and tweak your whole checkout. Maybe your user experience on your site, people are landing on your shop page but aren't doing anything or they aren't even clicking on anything. Maybe there's something going on that you need to tweak. Now, also, another social media that you should be looking at is your social media analytics. All the major platforms have them. Facebook has them if you have a Facebook page. Twitter has Twitter analytics. Instagram, if you have a business page set up, which you should if you are a business, um, will give you analytics on your content, on the best times, days to post about your audience, what they like, about how your posts are performing. I think Alex Wolf said this in the episode, but a good way to see if people are engaged with your stuff is not even likes, but are people saving things, right? People going back and putting them in collections. Are they curating things from what you're curating? That is what you really should be looking at. So take some time. I'm telling you, every business person, even if you're not going to be doing this full time, you should at least understand the core Website analytics, core social media analytics, the core metrics of what defines growth and whatever your goals are or sales are in your company. Take some time to really, really think about this. Now, I think the last thing I want to say is this is going to be so um, basic, but you got to tell people about your brand. You have to make it. If you're a marketer, that should be your number one goal, right? Find ways that you can tell people about the brand. So that could be through press. So, you know, maybe you hire a publicist or maybe you try to get bylines in different news uh, in, in, in other people's websites or whatever it is. I know that was a big thing for me, exonicole.com. I wrote an article, 10 things you should know before launching your own podcast. And that was very smart for me because number one, it helped me draw in people who were interested in podcasts, who just read Exo Nicole, or people who wanted to learn about how to grow things, right? Which were all people who were in my target avatar. And I got a lot, a lot of traction from that one article, and I still do. So think about creative ways that you can help other people who are also invested in your mission be successful. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of us, when we think about marketing, we think it's technical, but really it's all about how can we share and how can we provide value in as many different avenues as possible. And with that, telling everybody is you cannot be afraid to experiment, guys. You cannot be afraid to experiment. There may be things on this list that I talked about that probably won't work for you. There may be things that probably, you know, won't be specific to your brand, but hopefully you can see the goal of this was you got to figure out how you can spread value. Every tip I talked about today, marketing is about spreading value in a very 
specific way, right? I think data analytics is going to be the biggest thing that a lot of people, whatever space you're in, whatever industry you're in, is really understanding the data because we're living in an information and technological age. Understanding data and how you can use that to inform decisions is going to help take your marketing to the next level. So here's some quick things um, that I want to just tell you before we do a quick recap of all the points we talked about today is number one, remember, things will change. Things that started in the beginning that I did back in 2016, I'm probably not doing it today. There are some things that are just changing as the world changes, as the industry change, your strategy will change as well. Data changes as well. Um, you really have to understand your culture and your niche. What is your brand culture? What's your brand purpose? What's your brand identity? Really take some time to craft that out because when you know who you are, you know what will work. The best marketer truly understands the needs of their audience. What does your audience need right now that if you can give it to them, you can give it to them? For example, burgers. When I was in L.A., I needed burgers and in and out just seemed to always be there when I needed a burger. Right. It's, it's just it's, it's really that simple. Um, for me, I learned that sometimes you have to take opportunities that may scare you, even if you don't know the outcome. Like me sharing my miscarriage story in L.com was something that I was able to align myself with a major brand, because the next thing I'm going to say is brand names will always do what brand names do most of the time, which is draw attention, right? Me getting that spotlight on Jimmy Fallon and getting to talk to Chadwick Boseman about Black Panther, that was a unique branding opportunity that I wasn't even going to take because I doubted it. I'm like, what could this ever amount to? But little did I know what it was really going to be. So take some risk, right? Experiment, take some risk, And also find a way to leverage those brand names. To this day, you know, someone taking the time to, a contributor taking the time to write about me at Essence.com now allows me to say, hey, Dreams and Drive was featured on Essence. And I probably didn't get that much traffic from that Essence article, but I got a lot of eyeballs. I got a lot of people congratulating me because they tied Dreams and Drive with this iconic name. So sometimes marketing will be about traffic and sometimes it will be about eyeballs and buzz, which is as equally as important. Also remember, this is a lot of work, guys. Like all these things I'm talking about are not things that I've always done every week, but they're things that I had to do consistently over and over and over. And that's where the idea of patience, consistency, and willingness to experiment is never going to go away right? If you're in the marketing game, you have to be patient, you have to be consistent, and you have to be willing to experiment, but experiment in a controlled environment, experiment and know what you're looking for. And it goes back to that bigger goal that we talked about earlier today, which is what is your goal? Like, what is it that you're truly, you're truly working towards? You know, if you're a B2C brand, if you're uh, online e-commerce brand, your goal is sales, you're trying to get more sales. For me as a podcaster who's still trying to figure out what my monetization scheme or what my monetization strategy is going to be, my big goal right now is growth and downloads, getting more people to know about Dreams and Drive. So if you enjoyed this episode today, the best thing you could do right now to help me, and I'm employing some marketing tactics right here, number one is I'm making you feel like you know, you're doing something good, right? please share this with somebody, right? And you now have a task as a dream driver to help this platform grow, right? Share this with somebody, screenshot this on Instagram, put in your Instagram stories, make a post about it, tweet it to somebody, tell them to go to dreamsanddrive.com and listen to episode 170. Tell them what you really, really learned from this, Um I know I may be talking fast, but hopefully some of the things that I talked about really, really seep in because I think that a lot of times we think that marketing is hard and you can just invest. Maybe it's a few hours a week. Maybe it's a few minutes a day. But if you invest in it and if you're consistent, you will see you will see traction, Um, One of the things, one of the reasons why I started Dreams and Drive is because I kind of wanted to test myself. I told myself that I had never seen consistent results. Like I had always blogged and stopped, right? But what would happen if 
I just showed up for myself every week. And you, you see it, right? The podcast has had over 600, almost nearing 700,000 downloads, right? We've had over 150 guests. I've been featured on a bunch of places. I could go on and on about all the things that I've done, but I was intentional and I was putting in the work and I'm still putting in the work. And sometimes there's days when like, I don't want to do it. Like this, this month of September has been a huge month of transition for me. And I really, at some points, I'm like, why am I even podcasting? Like, what is, where is my life going? What, what am I doing? But just every day I did a little something, something. I may not have been posting on Instagram as consistently, but I was doing a little something, something. And that's the thing that I want you guys to all remember. Why are you doing it? What is it that you really want? What makes you smile about what you're doing? And when you have those days where you just feel like low to the ground, always remember that because it's going to be that little like, um, lighter that gets your dream going again, right? And sometimes you're going to be in park. Sometimes you're going to be in reverse. You're going to be in neutral, but it's all, you're still in the car though, right? You can't be in any of those things. I mean, you could be in park and be out the car, but for most of the, most for the point of this metaphor right here, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. That's really all I want to say to you guys is with marketing, how I built dreams and drive is truly staying focused on that goal and knowing that um, it's going to be a long run. It's going to be a long drive. And I can't get distracted by other people's success, right? Because I think on this, in this journey and sometimes the social media, it makes everything so magnified is you can, you can get in the envy game, right? You can say, Oh my God, this person's only been around for three days and has 5,000 million downloads. And it's like, all right, but that's not your journey. So wherever you are, stay on your journey. Remember, not everyone's metrics of success is going to look the same because somebody could have 2000 downloads ever in their podcast and make a million dollars because they only needed four key listeners, right? Like What I'm trying to say is everyone's metrics are different. So the challenge for all of us is to remember that we are on unique missions on along our dream driving journeys. And lastly, I want to say is constantly be learning, guys. Like I am a student of this industry, although I do love that Guerrilla Marketing Remix book. Get it at dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore. But it's just so, so important for us to remember that. Um, I really, really enjoyed talking to you guys today. This Driver's Ed series is one that I've been putting off But I love talking about marketing. There's a lot of stuff that we didn't get into detail, just like the logistical and technical side of it, such as your email service provider, you know, how to set up the email automation, all that stuff. If you have specific questions, please send me a DM. Email me, Raina at dreamsanddrive.com. You can find us on social media at Dreams and Drive across the board. Um... Please, 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 please use me as a resource. Ask questions. I want to make dreams and drive more interactive. I want to share more of my knowledge and my wisdom with you. I love talking about this kind of stuff because I think there's so much room for creativity. Like just the other day, I was talking to this girl who um just launched a face painting store or face painting location in Orange or East Orange. Um, and we were talking about ways that she can get people in the doors for Halloween. And I said, hey, why don't you have a, like a Halloween party, invite, you know, kids, have it be a safe space. P- people can trick or treat because our neighborhoods are kind of rough, right? Throw a little cover charge at the door. You can even get people in the door by having them donate costumes in the head, you know, in advance, a lot of people have old costumes in their house. They don't know what to do with them. Churches have old costumes. Uh, schools have old costumes. Once they donate a costume, they get a little card from you with an invitation to the trick or treat party. Like, I love doing this kind of stuff, guys. So I'm so excited to be talking more about this. I might be opening up consultations. I don't know. So give me ideas based upon what you heard me speak about today. Like, if you have any ideas on ways that we can monetize or dreams and drive can monetize this knowledge that I have. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you all today. Remember for today's show notes, just go to dreamsanddrive.com and then you can click on the episode 170. I also want to encourage you guys to get dreams and drive gear. 
dreamsanddrive.com slash shop to shop our crew necks, hoodies, and our t-shirts. Guys, if you never supported the podcast before, this would be an awesome opportunity to do it. Um, a lot of you guys have been consuming this information for almost three years for free. So just get a t-shirt, you know, show some support, get to someone. But it really does mean a lot to me when I see y'all putting in orders and just the support overall. Also, my cash app is dreams and drive i mean i've never said this on the show before but i'm just here experimenting right so if you guys want to just send the dollar sign dreams and drive make a donation i really appreciate that as well we don't have any new reviews this week so guys go to apple podcast right now after you listen to this leave a rating leave a review let me know what you enjoyed about this episode let me know what your favorite episode is it really helps with our rankings overall um Life happened to me if these few months and I'm just trying to get back on the, you know, ramping up my marketing goals, which is growth. So any help you guys can give in that arena would be much, much appreciated. As always, keep dreaming, keep driving. Um, I'm excited for the interviews we have coming up in October when we start interviews back up again. I know you guys will as well. Uh, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys again in episode 171. Bye, guys.